Okay, I'll try and keep this as clear as I can, um, and I've made everything as neat as I can, so as we can see where everything is and how it is placed. <coughs> we now have four meters numbered one, two, three, and four. Those two meters will be measuring our input current. Those two meters will be measuring the output current here going to each LED. <coughs> Meter 1 on the input side is going to be reading the current from the high side. I'm going to call this the high side and this side the low side. But it will be reading the current from our wave generator from here to here and then averaging that current out. Of course there won't be none here and it'll be peak current there. So it's going to average the current out between that point and that point. Meter 2 um, will be reading a negative current as suggested I hook it up just so we can visualize that which is the low side here. So that's going to be reading between this line and this line here. And then, because we'll have zero current here and full current there, it will average out over that time. These two meters here will be doing exactly the same. And I've hooked them up the same way as the input so we can compare the two together. So three will be measuring the high side going to this LED and metre 4 will be measuring the low side going to the other LED which are two different colours but draw the same amount of current and that's purely just for visual so we can see the high side and low side LED working we can see the metre that we're reading the positive input and the metre that will be reading the positive output and this meter will be reading the negative input and this meter here will be reading the negative output um, and the reason, the way we've been able to do that is to use two diodes on the input one facing one direction, one facing the other so that will split the current so our meter will not read zero now it will give us the uh, current produced on the high side and the low side separately as will those two there uh, really not much more else to tell um, you can see the circuits a little different I got rid of the large cap that I called the load output cap that was actually killing the system and I have changed the position of one of the legs on the pancake coil so we will also be chucking the scope across the system to read our voltages and our uh, wave formation and I will turn the uh, frequency up once we've started this as that makes a hell of a difference as you will see so we're going to turn all the meters on now like I said they are identical meters a little bit later on we are going to swap these two meters and put them here and put those two meters there to show you that the meters are not playing tricks the meters are also reading the exact same frequency across all four these two here read what these two are reading so if they're making an error they make it all together um, okay so we're going to turn it on now and we have our blue LED and a green LED although they look the same colour in the uh, video camera um, not too bright because at the moment we're only putting 7.8 milliamps on one side and 7.9 on the other the blue one is on the high side the green one is on the low side and of course a negative and a positive both go to the ground side and then we send the high side current to one positive of the LED and the low side goes to the negative of the other LED um, so that's what we have at the moment as far as the meters are concerned now 
probably saying we're already getting more out than we're putting in because these ones are reading higher but what you have to remember is we have a voltage drop here so because these meters are before these diodes they have a higher voltage going through them thus they need less amps to produce the same amount of watts input so when you take into consideration about 0.5 volts that's actually a little bit worse if you do the sums so uh, less than what appears to be 100% efficient at the moment but here's where it gets interesting I'm going to wind the frequency up and we can watch the meters and it is very touchy okay now at the moment that's as fast as it goes and I wish it went higher in frequency because it seems the higher we go in frequency the better effect we get now that is what we have that is what our meters are telling us they're all reading the same pulse at the same speed um, these two little caps I've disconnected pay no attention to them the circuit now is the LEDs the two diodes and our pancake coil so we have 3.56 milliamps uh, going in to the high side and 3.61 negative is going in to the low side orange is the high side and yellow is the low side and this one here of course is the ground common to everything even the coil itself on one leg now our output to our LEDs apparently is that so um, like I said the frequency makes a very big difference I'll turn it down we can go really really bad if you turn it down more it starts to come back again but not as much as it should and if we turn it up we can see the difference it makes so um, that's what the identical meters in the identical situation situation are telling us and the LEDs are indeed very bright there's no way that the input voltage or input amperage should I say will be driving those LEDs like that that is um, more likely to be the case what we're going to do now is put our scope on the ground side which like I said is common to all and I'm going to place this on the input the probe sorry onto the input before the diodes we will make sure our scope is zeroed out which it pretty much all is we're set on the two volt divisions <clears throat> so we have two about 3.6 on the high side and four on the low side as far as volts are concerned now if I take the probe off and put it after the diodes of course we will get a voltage drop oh. as you can see there so now we have about 3 volts dropping down to about uh, 2.4 and on the bottom side we have about 3.5 volts so um, that's the voltage loss across the diodes which is why them ones those input meters were reading less current than those ones to start with that signal you see there is the signal across everything in the circuit because um, we are using a common ground for everything we can put our scoop on the positive leg of one LED and that is what we have can also put it on the positive leg or what is the positive because it's going low and we have the exact same thing <coughs> we 
can also put it across our pancake coil and it shows the exact same thing so uh, that is what we have in the circuit at the moment um, so apparently that is our input current and we will see once again over our two 3.5 3.5 volts on the high side 4 volts on the bottom side um, and once again after the diodes what the rest of the system is seeing is we have about 3 volts here and about 3.6 on the low side and I would expect because it's two different coloured LEDs one is, uh, requires a little more than the other which is why we have a difference there um, so the other thing we're going to do is switch off the circuit and now we're going to change the meters to make sure that they are reading correctly and we don't have two duds so one and four we're going to change and two and three we're going to change we're now going to try and plug all these back in one handed which is extremely difficult ok we are getting there Fit. And it's extremely hot in the shed without the fan on. Okay, so now we've changed our meters around. We're going to turn the circuit back on. We don't know yet. For some reason this one reads nothing. There we go. Okay. And I think you'll find that they're um, saying the exact same thing as they did before we swapped them off. So that is what I have, and that is how I've tested it, as suggested by a couple of guys on each of the forums um, and like I said all the meters are the same and they're all reading the same frequency however our input is that on the voltage we showed on the scope and our output is that so uh, not really sure what's going on there and it's definitely not the scope itself that has anything to do with it and the one other thing I will do while we're here is switch off the main power supply to the shed it's going to get dark um, of course our scope is gone out because that was the main switch and we'll turn the lights on to try and make it a bit brighter so the power is now completely isolated from the shed there is none coming in anywhere and as you can see we still have the same stuff so uh, and I would doubt very much we'd get a difference like that from radio waves well seems to be the frequency and as soon as we adjust the frequency slightly we can make things go way out of rack, whack sorry and the system like right there becomes very inefficient but if we turn the frequency back up that is what we have okay so now it's your turn to ponder and uh, give me some answers as to why that happens cheers guys